Hey there card readers, April here with Tarot and Witchery. And today I'm asking the question, what's the deal with indie decks? Why are they so expensive? Like, are they worth it? Is it all hype? What happens when they go mass market? Are they really better? Oh my gosh, the questions go on and on and on. But we don't wanna sit out here even though my garden is lovely and you can see in the background our three story tree house there. You guys don't have a three story clubhouse in your yard? My God, if you don't know how to build dangerous toys, my husband does. So let's head inside and look at some decks and talk about this kind of controversial subject about indie decks and how darn expensive they have become. All right, here I am surrounded by lots of decks. I'm gonna try to just whip through a bunch of them and we're gonna attack some of these questions because it, it is a discussion. Uh, indie decks are getting really expensive and you kinda gotta ask yourself what's, what's all the hype about. So let's jump into these decks and really rip this apart. But before we start, let me know down below how many indie decks you actually own. Put that in the comments down below. Okay, let's get going. Let's talk about Kickstarter and Indiegogo first, man. There you are, you're on their app, you're scrolling, and there's this magnificent tarot or oracle deck, and you're like, wow, oh, it's so shiny, it's so special. And then you look at what it takes to be a backer and the different packages that are on there, and you think to yourself, I'm, just, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna do it. How many of you remember your first indie deck from Kickstarter that you bought. This this one was the first one I ever bought. Once I got it here, um, I pulled it out and I went to do a review on it. We're not gonna look at a ton of it, there are the backs. But you know, you get your deck and then you're faced with like, you know, is this what I thought it would be? And you know, indie decks go from about 40, I've seen them for 40 just recently but I've seen them as high as $125. And you know, if you're on the other side of the world, like if it's coming to me from Australia, it's gonna be spendy. If it's going to you over um, in Europe, man, you know, the costs of shipping are getting big and you've really gotta think about whether or not it's actually worth it. If you wanna know what I think about this deck, you can actually look up my video where I do a full review on it. And you know, there's there's just no guarantees on a Kickstarter on what exactly you're gonna get, except what you can kind of see on the uh, the advertisement. And so you have to ask yourself, is there a lot of hype? There's times I've been looking at decks on Indiegogo or on Kickstarter, and there's like you know 15 pictures of the cards, and I I don't really know what I'm getting. There are lots of decks that you can find on Etsy that are done by creators that are really quite lovely. And <clears throat> you know, they're, they're personally produced. They are not mass produced, meaning you're not gonna buy them on Amazon. I do find that Etsy decks tend to be just as expensive as Kickstarter decks. And sometimes creators have their own sites and they create decks that they are, you know, putting out themselves. This is Kitten Chop's deck. And again, they're a little bit more expensive. And there are times that decks are pretty expensive and you take the chance on that because you just know that that's going to be something that's an experience, something that you absolutely love. Yeah. <gasps> Look at it. Oh, amazing, you guys. Amazing. How okay. the paper on the inside. It's everything that I <laughs> would want it to be. I love it. Oh, this is so pretty that you guys feel it. <laughs> it's embossed. Look at that fool. It's there's so much going on. I love it. When it comes to are the decks too expensive? Well, there's times when I've gotten a deck and I've thought this was not worth it. It was not worth it. And then there are times when I say I absolutely love this and it's worth it. You know, I can't imagine, well, I guess I can imagine because I've started trying to do my own deck, the amount of work that goes into creating your own deck. It's it's a labor of love. 
So what happens when a deck goes mass market, like something that's been indie produced and then suddenly it's available mass market for a cheaper amount of money? Do you feel ripped off? Do you feel like, wow, why should I have purchased that indie deck? Well, here's my thoughts on that. The truth is, is that plenty of once exclusive decks become mass market. In the case of the Mary L Tarot, I have the second edition, which is the mass market version. There's just a couple cards that are different. And I guess, you know, does, is, does that make people angry when their deck becomes mass market get? Does that somehow diminish your experience of the deck when that happens for you? Um, you know, for me, no. It doesn't. If I know that I have a first edition, my box is going to say first edition. I'm going to know that it's the uh, it's the indie deck, and I suppose if I ever wanted to resell it, it's going to um, I'm going to get that value. Maybe, maybe not, because I'm reminded of the tulip craze, where tulips were going for just massive amounts of money at some point, and then that bubble popped. And I do think the bubble is popping on. On this, I don't think that we can sustain some of the crazy amounts of money that go for decks, but there will always be people that are willing to pay more to get just what they want. The Intuitive Night Goddess. Now, I pre ordered the second edition of this deck from the creator. I paid more money than what I could have paid to get it on Amazon because it is now mass produced. It has now been picked up. The thing is, is it a real copy? Did somebody steal that art and they are selling it for a song, you know? Creators work a long time on these decks, or at least I hope they do, right? You know, how much is someone's art worth? You know, what's, what's it really worth? And honestly, all the time, haven't you ever been to some of these art shows and you think that is absolutely horrendous. That is so ugly. I would never spend $15,000 or $1.5 million on it. People spend money on all sorts of things, but you're here because you spend money on decks. I chose to buy directly from the creator because I wanted to be sure that she was getting paid for her work, you know, that she was being honored for the time, the blood, sweat, and the tears that she put into creating this deck. I can't speak for people outside of the US, but here in the US, we do not have a very good sense of art. I'm sorry, we just, we, we don't really support the arts the way that, you know, you think about the arts being supported when I think about in Europe, the way that art used to be supported. I don't know that it was ever really supported over here like that. But part of what I enjoy about buying an indie deck or a privately produced deck is that I am supporting an artist. I am supporting someone who um, really put themselves into their work. And for me, being a part of the culture of art is something that's really, really important. I think each one of us has to ask ourselves whether that's something that's important to us. But there is this thing that I see happening, like with certain deck studios where they put out these limited editions um, and they say, you know, it's only going to be so many of a print. And I have to ask myself, do these limited runs create greater hype? Do they create um, an exclusive tarot culture? Does it make... Um, does it make tarot inaccessible to the masses by having these decks that cost more and more money that are limited editions? And uh, is that somehow locking some people out of experiencing tarot by creating this members only sort of realm? Back to the question or the idea that um, Indie decks are somehow going to take uh, the everyday Joe, sorry, some of these are not right side up, you guys, away from their access to tarot. Well, you know what? There are just so many decks out there that are mass market and they're highly affordable. You can see the difference in the prices on these three decks. 
you know, what is a deck worth to you? Um, I discovered Benabel when and I had decided I really wanted, I really wanted her Vitruvian edition of this deck. I went online and I could get it for like, at one point I managed to see one that went for 175. I did not get that. So there is a point for me where it's not worth it. Um, but I did manage to wait around and the, this, the new SKT came out, the Revelations edition, and I, I got it. I did get it. And for me, it was worth it. And I've got my little signed card, you know, telling me what number this is. And I totally love this, this deck. It's not how expensive the deck is that makes it special. It's the value that you place on it. And if you can't afford an indie deck, then you can certainly afford plenty of mass market decks or even one mass market deck. And tarot reading is not necessarily about having hundreds of decks, but rather doing the work to develop a relationship with tarot and dive into that. And I can tell you, I had one deck for you know, seven years and I got lots out of it. I didn't need a ton of decks. Is the cardstock better on indie decks? In my opinion, most of the time, yes, but that doesn't deter me from buying a mass produced deck that's shiny or more plasticky. And even some of the bigger companies have started putting out matte finished decks if that's something that you're into. So I guess the skinny answer to this question, are indie decks too expensive for me? Sometimes. Sometimes they darn well are. It's just not worth it to me. And other times it absolutely is. It's very personal. I suppose we can all get caught up in FOMO, like this fear of missing out on the special deck that's out there so shiny and new and, you know, seemingly <laughs> unobtainable. If you think you have FOMO, then you may want to check out my video over here that talks a little bit about deck FOMO and the fact that I think it's very real and what we do with that as, as deck purchasers and consumers. Until we meet again, may you find the deck that you want, may you value it and be able to afford it.